All right, camera's on. And then, yeah, if you'd rather, like, you can look at us if you want or look at the camera, kind of up to you, but uh, go ahead. Pick Just up. chatting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess, I, I know Casey had, like, some things that he wanted to touch on, but uh, so do you want to, like, do that first thing and just kind of pick yeah, it yeah. back? Okay. Let's just go through some of the just basic stuff first. So, like, um, like what, sorry, what's your name? Uh, uh, Bryce Jarvis. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm a right-handed pitcher. How old are you, Bryce? I'm 23. Perfect. Um, and what school did you go to? I went to Duke for three years. Very nice. It's kind of just, I just want to get those basic ones down. Yeah. But yeah. Go ahead, Um. Yeah, well, I know something that Casey kind of mentioned to me that I thought would be kind of an interesting, like, story angle is, like, obviously going through the draft like during COVID can you kind of just like talk a little bit about what that was what that was like and obviously it's not like the experience you you dream of when yeah. it's happening during a pandemic but maybe you can just kind of talk about that a little bit for sure so I think that story kind of starts with our college season getting canceled mm -hmm. uh, I think we were three or four weeks into the season and uh, found out that like there's no longer going to be a season right. so I got together with um, I think it was six of my Duke teammates, okay. and we road tripped it down to Florida and found a facility to train at. And um, there were a bunch of other guys down there doing the same thing from okay. all over the country. So we got to you know work out and uh, throw bullpens for the pitchers. Mm -hmm. The hitters got to take live abs and uh, basically just stay in shape until the draft because right. we, all the guys I was with were draft eligible. And um, so you know just got our work in down there and. Uh, I think it was you know, two or three months we were down there before the draft. And okay. I think that time was um, huge leading up to the draft because yeah. we could, you know, get video to send to scouts. And, right. Um, you know, were there scouts, like, at the facility or no? No, okay. so everything okay. was just... Was so you were, like, doing it on your own? Like, yeah. Like, sending just, your clips to people? And, yeah, okay. completely on our own, taking video clips, doing Zoom interviews oh, wow. with um, front offices and mm -hmm. scouts and mm -hmm. GMs and all that. Um, which a lot of that is is in person right and, right uh, usually usually yeah <laughs> uh like in the fall i had in-person you know scout meetings right uh, but just like all the follow-ups and all the like real real conversations about the draft yeah. happen you know through zoom and all that sure and then um can you kind of like walk me through the process of like the actual like draft day and like what that was like for you? Yeah, so I was back home in Nashville with okay. my family. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember, you know, waking up super early in the morning. <laughs> um, I went into the facility that I was working out at, at home and mm -hmm. just tried to keep everything as, as normal as possible right, and right. not go too crazy <laughs> yeah. waiting for, for the night to come. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just a good day spent surrounded by friends and family. And, yeah, uh, definitely something I won't ever forget. Yeah, was it like you got a like your agent called you, or how did that actual like, process go when you got called? Yeah, so I was watching the draft on TV, obviously with my family. I had my phone next to me. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to my agent throughout the day, just mm -hmm. kind of leading up to it, and um, I think like 15 or 20 seconds before the pick came in, I got the call and. Um, they were like, Arizona wants you here, like, you cool with that? And I was like, <laughs> heck yeah. yeah. So, um, came back in the room and I think everyone kind of knew. They, they saw me walk out and take the phone call and everything. And, right. Um, then it was, came through and it was awesome. Yeah. Did you have an idea of where you might get drafted? Um, a little bit, yeah. I mean, it's hard to, hard to nail it down exactly, mm -hmm. but um, I had like a 10 to 15 pick range that okay. I had a good feeling that I was going to go in, but nothing's for sure, and you definitely don't want to count anything before they hatch. Right. Had you talked to the Diamondbacks a decent amount before the draft, or, or what was your relationship like with them prior to being selected? Yeah, so I talked to most of the teams before the draft. I would say the Diamondbacks were definitely not in the top like couple that I had the most conversations with, mm -hmm. um, but they were definitely in there, and, and looking back, I probably should have expected them more the way the, the way the conversations went. Uh -huh. But um, but yeah, it was I was honestly a little surprised. Um, okay, pivoting a little bit, um, we I was just reading like the game notes that um, our announcer puts together, and I saw that your dad was in the ma in Major League Baseball. So can you kind of talk about like your relationship and what that's been like as you kind of started your professional career? Yeah, for sure. Um, so obviously having my dad, you know 
play while I was growing up. Mm -hmm. I was growing up in baseball. Yeah. Um, you know, my family was all about baseball. Like spring breaks were spent going to see him in spring training, mm -hmm. and um, summers were watching him play and um, getting to hang out with his teammates in the clubhouses and stuff. Yeah. And so that was kind of my childhood, and um, definitely didn't feel pressured to to play baseball myself, but. It's definitely something that you know I think I was put here to do, mm -hmm. and so having my dad be that resource that I can always go to and For sure. um, you know ask advice, not even on field stuff like mm -hmm. off the field stuff mm -hmm. and um, you know draft stuff. And, yeah. You know, there's a whole lot outside of what goes on between the lines that mm -hmm. I feel really fortunate to to have him to to ask questions about. Yeah, definitely. Anything you want to add on that, please? No, I mean it's he, he had a, had a pretty fun career. We were you know looking at it, and looks like he missed a couple World Series opportunities by a yeah. year or two. Really but, close. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean that's just awesome to have have that kind of resource you know at home with you and, and mm -hmm. be sure. kind of that guiding light. Yeah, that's that's cool. Um, and then what about like the rest of your family? Do you have like siblings? Yeah. Or, okay. I have a younger sister. Um, okay. She's about to be a senior at Auburn. Okay, War Eagle. Uh, War Eagle. My sister went to Auburn. Yeah, so, yeah. She loves it there. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, it's just me and my younger just sister. Just you and your sister. Okay, yeah. nice. Um, and then maybe we can just touch on like a little bit of like you were talking about like inside the line and outside the line. So, like you know, if you weren't playing baseball, like you know, what you study at do? Like, what do you think you'd be doing? What do you like to do when you're not practicing and on the field and that sort of thing? For sure. So I studied mechanical engineering at Duke. Oh wow. Um, that's always been kind of something I've been into, mm -hmm. you know, figuring out how things work, yeah. you know, what to do, how to fix them, um, that type of stuff. Uh -huh. So, you know, something in that field for sure. I've always, you know, thought it would be cool to, to go into some sort of like job at NASA, like astronaut, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. not. But, um, you know, that, that's always been something that intrigued me. Um, so yeah. do you like love the analytic side of like pitching oh, for baseball sure. and stuff like that? For okay. sure. I think that helps me a ton. Yeah, you definitely. Know, being able to take in all the all the data that's available uh -huh. to us, especially as pitchers yeah. these days. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to like sort through that very analytic analytically. Right. Um, for sure helps. And then you know, off the field, I think it, it's hard to hard to play in the minors without you know, liking to golf at least a little bit, especially <laughs> as a pitcher. There's a lot of a lot of downtime, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I love to golf. Okay, um, definitely something that you know I gravitate towards, especially you know hanging out with teammates out yeah. on the course. It's a it's a good kind of de Have you guys even had time to, to do that? Oh reserve, yeah. Least, okay. Yeah. What's that? They've already, they've already been to the reserve. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Sure. Getting some a hold in. Okay. Cool. Um, that's awesome. And then. I kind of just have like some quick fact questions. If there's anything else you want to touch yeah, on before, yeah. um, curious about kind of your, your Duke experience a little bit. Um, you know, Duke, predominantly known as obviously a little bit of a basketball school. Uh, did you have other opportunities for other schools? What led you to go to Duke, um, and, and what was kind of the baseball experience like there? Yeah, for sure. So choosing Duke kind of takes me back to. Uh, you know, I definitely wanted to do some sort of engineering. Mm -hmm. um, they have a really good engineering school. Um, I had opportunities to go to other, you know, good engineering schools with good baseball. Mm -hmm. But I think the thing that attracted me towards Duke was that they didn't really have the, you know, storied success of a baseball program. But they were like up and coming. Right. Um, so like all the pieces were kind of getting there mm -hmm. to to turn the program around and, and really you know make a run at the college world series it was mm -hmm. somewhere that um, i knew i would be able to have an impact right away as yeah. a freshman um, and that was something that was really important to me i didn't want to go somewhere and wait around for a spot to open up um, and i felt like i could i could impact the team really quick there mm -hmm. um, and it ended up you know being a great experience we Went to two super regionals. Um, we're on our way to another um, before the season got shut down. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, looking back, I, I definitely would have done it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I talked to you about this one of your first days here, but we would love to, to kind of hear it again on camera uh, about your perfect game yeah. uh, against Cornell. And uh, you know, I, I was—I I know I asked you, but I was definitely interested at like, you know 
kind of at what point did you feel like you had your stuff going that day and, and you know, what was really clicking for you in that process? Yeah, so definitely one of my favorite memories between the lines <laughs> on a baseball field. Yeah. Um, yeah, I felt great before the game. Um, I wouldn't say anything super special or out of the ordinary, but um, you know, started clicking early, and then I think you know, right around the fifth inning um, was my only full count of the game, and it was uh, two outs, and I ended up punching the guy out on a front door slider, I think, and then from there it was just all downhill. Uh -huh. I, knew, I knew I had it from there. <laughs> That's awesome. That what what so kind of? Cool. How did you feel after the game? Like I'm assuming you had friends, family reaching out, calling you. Like, yeah. You were on Sports Center. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that had to be a cool process. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have both my parents in the stands for that. Um, made that even more special. Mm -hmm. um, it was awesome just sharing it with my my teammates. I think uh, you know, looking back, no one ever does something like that alone. It mm -hmm. takes plays in the field, plays behind the plate. Um, so. Just getting to share that with with everyone who who took part in it was awesome. That's nice. That's so cool. Um, anything else you want to add? Okay. okay. And then I don't know if you've seen like we have like a little digital program for all the fans, and we just do like a player Q and A. So I just have like some quick like kind of fun questions. So like, what would your walk up song be? Uh, Legend by the Score. Okay. Um, favorite sports team? Uh, Nashville Predators. Okay. Um, Hobby? I mean, I guess you're going to say golf, but it's something different. Golf? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go with golf. Okay. Um, so, yeah, anybody within the Diamondbacks that's really kind of taking under their wing and, and helped get you going in pro ball? Um, I think, you know, all the pitching coaches in the organization are, are really good. They have a really good grasp on, uh, you know, what it means to, to develop as a pitcher. So, mm -hmm. I mean, Barry Enright and our pitching coach, Shane, um, have both done a really good job at, um, you know, allowing me to be myself and, and do the things that I know can make me the player I want to be, but also, you know, steer me, keep me in the lines and, mm -hmm. um, you know, give their input, but also, you know, take mine as well. That's awesome. Yeah. Assumedly, uh, you know, a goal would be to make major leagues and, and, you know, pitch at the big league level. What are some of your ultimate career goals? Um, I mean, obviously, playing the big leagues, uh, win a World Series. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's always just been, you know, get to the big leagues and stay there for me. So um, outside of that, it's, it's kind of it for now. But uh, hopefully it'll get more specific as I, as I get closer. There you go. The last one that I have is, is do you have, like, either a quote or like best piece of advice that you've been given, you know, something that you'd want to share. Yeah, I mean, my main thing when I'm on the mound is just control what you can control. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's leading up to the game with your preparation or, or what you're doing on the mound, it's just not letting outside factors affect you. Whether it's the umpire or plays in the field, like, can't control that, so it's not worth worrying about. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Good advice. You got anything else? I don't think so. Yeah. Thanks so much.